Hello everyone uh, and welcome to this webinar on thinking and working mathematically. Um, while we're waiting for uh, a few more people to, the, to attend, um, I'll introduce myself and Holly. I, my name is Rob Thompson. I am the International Sales Director for Collins. Um, and I have with me this afternoon for this webinar, Holly. Um, Holly is the editor for International Primary Maths, amongst other things, at Collins. Um, the, the, the format of this afternoon's or today's webinar um, is uh, we have a recording um, which has been done on a presentation by Peter Clark, who's the series editor of International Primary Maths, both in the first edition and the new edition. Um, and that presentation is around about 16, 17 minutes long and will run through um, some of the aspects of thinking and working mathematically. Um, after the presentation is finished, Holly and I will be back um, for a Q&A session um, where we can answer any questions that you might have on thinking and working mathematically and how it's addressed in Collins or, or within the syllabus. If you think of any questions during the presentation, please do type them in the question and answer function within, within Zoom. Um, we uh, will also prompt you if we don't have many questions at the end of the presentation, so there's plenty of time to do that. Um, as I say, the, the presentation is about 16, 17 minutes long, and then we have um, sort of half an hour or so for questions. Um, if, we, if it takes that long, we'll attempt to answer all the questions. There are a couple of points during the um, webinar where you are invited to pause and look at parts of the screen um, and we are recording the webinar um, and we will make that available to everyone afterwards so don't worry um, if Peter asks you to take a bit of time to look through a slide you can always go back afterwards and look at the recording we will send that to you um, and we'll give you some more information as well before we start the Q&A session. Um, I think we've the, the number of attendees has stopped going up, so I think it's probably time for me to stop talking um, and for us to go over to the presentation. And then I'll see you again in, in I say, 16, 17 minutes for some questions. So over to the presentation, please. Hello and welcome. My name is Peter Clark, and I'm the series editor of Collins International Primary Maths. In this webinar, I'm going to talk about one of the most important new features of the revised Cambridge Primary Mathematics Curriculum Framework, and that is the processes of thinking and working mathematically, and how the new edition of Collins International Primary Maths encourages and develops these characteristics. In the revised Cambridge Primary and Lower Secondary, mathematics curriculum frameworks, the problem solving strand and associated learning objectives have been replaced with four pairs of thinking and working mathematically characteristics. The thinking and working mathematically characteristics represent one of the most significant changes to the updated Cambridge curriculum framework. In response to this, the new edition of Collins International Primary Maths has incorporated and interwoven thinking and working mathematically throughout all of the components. This reflects the course's most substantial change to the teaching and learning of mathematics. Thinking and working mathematically is based on work by Mason, Burton and Stacey. It places an emphasis on learners actively engaging with their learning, talking with others, challenging ideas, and providing evidence that validates conjectures and solutions. It's about seeking to make sense of ideas, building connections between different facts, procedures, and concepts, and importantly, developing higher order thinking skills that assists them in viewing the world in a mathematical way. Thinking and working mathematically contrasts with learners simply following instructions and carrying out processes that they have been shown how to do 
without appreciating why such processes work or what the results mean. Through the development of each of the thinking and working mathematically characteristics, learners are able to see the application of mathematics in the real world much more clearly and also, crucially, to develop the skills necessary to function as citizens who are autonomous problem solvers. If learners at any of the Cambridge International stages are to gain meaning and satisfaction from their study of mathematics, then it is vital that thinking and working mathematically underpins their experience of learning the subject. The four pairs of thinking and working mathematically characteristics the Cambridge International identifies as fundamental to a meaningful experience of learning mathematics are represented diagrammatically and referred to as the thinking and working mathematically star. Specialising and generalising relate to finding and considering examples that meet specific mathematical criteria. Conjecturing and convincing relate to forming, questioning and justifying own or others mathematical ideas. Characterising and classifying relate to the identification and grouping of objects, which includes shapes, numbers and graphical representations, according to their mathematical properties. Critiquing and improving relate to reflecting on and refining mathematical strategies, representations or solutions. Critiquing and improving run through the six other characteristics, demonstrating the importance of considering how to refine your own methods or strategies when thinking and working mathematically. The eight characteristics of thinking and working mathematically are defined in the Cambridge Curriculum Framework as shown here. Also, as with the learning objectives in the framework, each of the eight thinking and working mathematically characteristics has a unique code which appears in the framework document and other Cambridge resources, as well as throughout Collins International Primary Maths. You may wish to pause here to read through each of the definitions of the thinking and working mathematically characteristics. All eight thinking and working mathematically characteristics can be applied across all of the Cambridge curriculum framework and across all mathematical strands and substrands although the prominence of different characteristics may change as learners move through the stages. Any characteristic can be combined with any other characteristic. Characteristics should be taught alongside content learning objectives and should not stand alone. The four pairs of characteristics intertwine and are interdependent and a high quality mathematics task may draw on one or more of them. Just as thinking and working mathematically is at the very heart of Cambridge primary mathematics, so too is this approach to the teaching and learning of mathematics a core feature of the new edition of Collins International Primary Maths. At each stage, Opportunities are provided in each of the 27 units for learners to develop the eight thinking and working mathematically characteristics. Specific guidance is provided in the unit introductions, which highlight teaching and learning opportunities, particularly in relation to the unit's learning objectives that promote the thinking and working mathematically characteristics. At each of the five phases, 
of a Collins International Primary Maths lesson, that is, revise, teach, practice, apply, and review. Guidance is given in the lesson plan on how to promote the thinking and working mathematically characteristics. Whenever any of the eight characteristics is being promoted in a lesson plan, this is shown using the initials T, W, M, followed by the Cambridge Curriculum Framework code that identifies exactly which of the eight characteristics is being developed. In addition to the support provided in the unit introductions and individual lesson plans, Collins International Primary Maths provides an adapted version of the Thinking and Working Mathematically Star that provides a list of prompting questions that teachers may find helpful when asking learners questions specifically aimed at developing each of the Thinking and Working Mathematically characteristics. This star is located in each of the teacher's guides. This Thinking and Working Mathematically star, located at the back of the Stages 1 and 2 students' books, contains pupil-friendly definitions of each of the eight Thinking and Working Mathematically characteristics. The star is aimed at helping learners think specifically about what is required when they are undertaking an activity designed to develop a specific thinking and working mathematically characteristic. This thinking and working mathematically star is located at the back of the stages three to six students' books. And like the version for the stages one and two students' books, it contains pupil-friendly definitions of each of the eight thinking and working mathematically characteristics. However, this stages three to six version of the star also includes some sentence stems that aim to help learners to talk with others, challenge ideas, and explain their reasoning. Learners should be encouraged to use the star, especially in stages three to six, whenever working on an activity that develops thinking and working mathematically. This includes whole class discussions and activities, group and pair activities, which include those located in the students' books, as well as additional practice activities, the apply slides, and also the individual questions from the workbook. As in the Collins International Primary Maths Teacher's Guide, learning opportunities aimed at developing thinking and working mathematically are also identified in the stages three to six students' book and workbook. Where a question or activity promotes thinking and working mathematically, this is clearly identified using the Thinking and Working Mathematically star and the framework code that identifies exactly which of the eight characteristics is being developed. A variation of the Thinking and Working Mathematically star is also included in each progress book. This version of the star includes I can statements of each of the eight thinking and working mathematically characteristics. Its purpose is to provide an opportunity for learners, twice a term, to think about each of the statements and record how confident they feel about thinking and working mathematically. Thinking and working mathematically should not consist of a separate end of lesson or unit activity, but should be embedded throughout lessons in every unit of work. Each of the eight thinking and working mathematically characteristics can be combined with most teaching topics. So when planning a unit of work, teachers should begin with one or more learning objectives and seek to draw on one or more Thinking and Working Mathematically characteristics. Thinking and Working Mathematically also enables learners' thinking to become visible, which is a crucial aspect 
a formative assessment. This and the following three slides include some examples of the range of activities suitable for developing each of the thinking and working mathematically characteristics. It is these types of activities and more that are included throughout Collins International Primary Maths to assist the teaching and learning of arguably the most significant change to the revised Cambridge framework. You may wish to pause on this slide and the following three slides in order to take time to read through some of these examples. It is highly recommended that as schools begin to prepare for the introduction of the new framework in September 2021, that in particular they start to think about teaching the processes of thinking and working mathematically. Some of the examples on these four slides could be used as a springboard for the types of activities that promote each of the thinking and working mathematically characteristics. To summarise, thinking and working mathematically is presented as four pairs of characteristics, specialising and generalising, conjecturing and convincing, characterising and classifying, critiquing and improving. Any of the eight characteristics can be combined with any other characteristic. Content learning objectives from the three strands can be taught standalone, but the thinking and working mathematical characteristics will be taught alongside these content learning objectives and not standalone. The development of one or more of the characteristics should be incorporated into every unit of work, but that doesn't mean necessarily into every lesson. Each of the eight characteristics apply across all six stages. Thinking and working mathematically supports mathematical knowledge, understanding and skills in all strands of the Cambridge Curriculum Framework. When learners think and work mathematically, they actively engage with their learning of mathematics. They try to make sense of ideas and build connections between different facts, procedures and concepts. Learners who do not think and work mathematically can carry out procedures that they've been taught, but they may not understand why these procedures work or what the results mean. Noticing inconsistencies, patterns, and different representations and having opportunities to practice, reflect and question encourage learners to think and work mathematically. For further information about the Cambridge Curriculum Framework, including how Collins International Primary Maths supports the framework, as well as details on the components of Collins International Primary Maths and other webinars and PowerPoint presentations to use within your school, go to the training package available on the Collins website. Thank you. Okay, um, so uh, I hope you enjoyed Peter's presentation. I hope you found some of the information useful. Um, and helpful to you in, in dealing with thinking and working mathematically. Um, as I stated at the beginning, if you've got any questions, please put them in the Q&A 
box and we'll attempt to address as many of them as we can. Um, just a couple of things. Obviously, I did say at the beginning, but I'll say again, we, have, we ha are recording the webinar and we will be sending you a, a link to that so that you can sort of go back over it. Um, there will also be certificates of attendance available, which we'll be emailing you about. Um, but if there's any other information that you that you want from us um, and you don't necessarily want to ask it in the Q&A or you think about it afterwards, if you see the email address that's on your screen there, collins.international, harpercollins.co.uk, if you get in touch with that and just tell us which school you're from, which is really helpful for us, um, we will get back to you as soon as possible. Um, so I'm going to start with some questions. Um, one of them is my question. Um, I, I've taken the, the first dibs on questioning um, just because it's something that I would be quite interested in and wanted to, to ask Holly as well. Um, in terms of the whole concept of thinking and working mathematically, um, as, as a concept, Holly, um, how much of this was in the previous edition sort of without being labelled as such? Um, quite a bit of it. Um, most of the principles of thinking and working mathematically are things that were perhaps under another name or just being done um, unknowingly in the first edition. Um, so it's things like improving on your um, methods, convincing people of the best way to use a method, categorising things. It's all the kind of activities will be done in maths generally. However, the introduction of it for the second edition and for the new Cambridge framework, is it's really embedded there as a key thing for learners to be aware of and a key principle of mathematic learning. Um, and that's something that we've therefore developed throughout the course, to make sure that um, learners are more aware of it as they're doing it and teachers have more guidance so that um, they can be confident that they are applying it in their lessons according to the framework. Excellent. Good, good. Um, and that kind of answers one of the other questions that we've had on the Q&A, um, where someone has asked, is this the latest edition of Collins International Primary Maths? Yes, it is. Um, the, the examples from it are the latest edition, which has just been published, um, and we're just going through the sort of publication dates of all of them now. They'll, they'll all be available in the next month or so. Um, just as an aside to that, again, um, these are the latest editions and they're just being released to the market. If anyone is interested in, in seeing samples of them, um, either physical or digital, uh, which we have available now, if you, again, drop Collins to the international uh, at harpercollins.co.uk an email, just tell us which school you're from and we can arrange all of that for you. Those digital samples are available now. Um, so yes, this is the latest edition we're talking about. Um, and then there's a there's a very interesting question going back to thinking and working mathematically. Um, and that's uh, a question basically saying, can these techniques be applied to key stage three? Now, I, I know that thinking and working mathematically has been applied across the whole Cambridge pre-14 syllabus. Um, so yes, the techniques are actually sort of used in key stage three as well or lower secondary as well as primary. Holly, anything to add on to onto that in terms of the techniques of thinking and working mathematically? Um, the only thing that I'd add is that they are identical across primary and lower secondary. So the objectives don't change, the language doesn't change. So there's loads of continuity um, across the stages. And in the Collins course itself, we've aimed to help along with that by introducing the same TWM star in both um, areas of primary and lower secondary. So there's something recognisable as learners move up through the stages. Excellent. Um, and then uh, a question here, um, is, is it designed in the form of spiral content? Um, I'm not particularly sure how to answer that, I'm afraid. If they're able to elaborate on spiral content, that would be great. And then I can see if it does apply to that. Okay, cool. Um, so, so Sarah, we haven't been able to answer that particular to, to question directly, but also if you drop us a line, we'll be able to, to look into it more in terms of the specifics. Um, it, is, uh, it is a curriculum that is based on um, revisiting topics and subjects. And, I, and my understanding of spiral would be that revisiting of topics after a certain period, um, rather than a linear, you do one topic and then forget it. 
Um, so my understanding is that the topics and themes within the Cambridge Pre-14 syllabus as a whole are revisited year after year or in, in different terms, so they're not all dealt with in one lump. If that's what you mean, then yes, it is. <laughs> if, if it was more detail you want, then do drop us a line, absolutely. Um, there is a question here, a very sort of, uh, either a simple or a very complex question, um, but it is, why is the word units used instead of ones? I'm not entirely sure why that pops up in the webinar, but the answer to that would be that it's probably a slightly um, outdated facsimile that we've used for the webinar. Um, and all of the print books and digital resources do use the terms ones, tens, hundreds, which is what's used in the Cambridge progression test. So the language that learners will be familiar with is what we've used in the Collins course. It might just be that this particular webinar needs updating slightly. And, and so I learn something every day. Um, and I wasn't entirely <laughs> sure of that terminology being updated, so that's quite useful. Um, a very, very good question. Um, a question here, um, has the, has, has, thinking of working mathematically, but I think really this is a question about international primary maths, got a digital version in, addi in addition to the interactive game. So is there a digital version of international primary maths? Um, Holly? Yes, um, we've got a full course available online via the extended teacher's guide ebook, which then gives you password access to all of the online downloads, which includes um, PDF and Word versions of the teacher's guide, a bank of um, slideshow presentations, and a full bank of digital tools and games, all of which have been updated for the new edition. Um, and thinking working mathematically um, isn't standalone in that, as in the course, it's embedded throughout and has all of the content there um, to help support teachers. Okay, um, and then there's a the the question here saying, is it the same as Collins Connect? And the answer to that is is no, it's not the same as Collins Connect. Some of the some of the digital resources and games, and Holly, jump in here if if, if you um, can elaborate. But some of the digital games and interactives are the, are, are similar or the same as we had on Collins Connect, but we've changed the delivery method to a. Uh, uh, sort of ebook format rather than and, and a download for those interactives rather than needing and requiring a constant online presence which we know has been difficult for for some schools um, and uh, the, the, so we've tried to simplify that digital offering uh, to make it more accessible. Um, have, I, have I got that right Holly or would you do anything else on that? Yeah, that's exactly right. So if you have used Connect already, um, it, most of the resources on there will be familiar to you. It's just provided in a different format. Um, OK, uh, and then there's a question here on thinking working mathematically included in the new checkpoint format. And the answer to that is yes. I mean, we, we spoke about it being in the lower secondary key stage three oh. syllabus. It is. Um, and the the concept of thinking and working mathematically will be both in the Cambridge syllabuses and in our textbooks all the way up to 14 because it's it's a it's a vital concept now um so so here's a question on on answers um well, not an answer of questions um why Collins books don't have answers why, why don't Collins books have answers of the questions which are given in the exercises now uh, again, I think I can answer at least part of that. And, and Holly, I'm right in thinking that the answers are in the teacher's guide. Yeah. Um, so basically, we don't have the answers in the pupils' books for reason that we, at, at the research that we've done and, and talking to schools, um, it is better to have. We we always advise schools to take the teacher's guide. The teacher's guide provides so much scaffolding and support to the teaching of international primary maths. Um, that we, we really always recommend that as a core component of what schools have. Um, we don't put the answers in the students' books because we got a lot of feedback from schools that said if you put the answers in the, in the students' books, then the students go home quite often, try to learn the answers for the, the, the whole term in advance and don't necessarily do the learning to get to the answer. Um, so uh, that's the, the, the main reason why we don't have those in the students' books. Um, Holly, is there anything else that needs to be added there? Um, no, I think that's exactly right. I'm answering all the questions this afternoon, Holly. We'll find some for you, don't you worry. Um, okay. Um, 
So we've, there's a question about Collins Connect, which we have answered that we're moving, the Collins Connect website isn't going to be updated for the new edition. We're doing it, and the current plan is to do it all by eBooks and downloads to make it a, a, a simpler offering, um, but there will be a digital side there, um, and it will be much easier, we hope, to interact with. Um, so the question here, um, a mental maths or and there's, my, there's a word I don't know how to pronounce, so that's really good. Uh, Vedic, Vedic techniques used, Holly, mental maths uh, are techniques used. Um, yes, so mental strategies are still a part of the course. Um, a less of a prescribed way according to the curriculum. I think the first edition was much more definitive in what mental math strategies would be used, whereas the curriculum now is much more open to learners understanding the different strategies and then deciding themselves which to apply based on the situation, giving them a bit more ownership, which is similar to what thinking and working mathematically does. Um, so yes, mental strategies are used alongside all of the course, including PWM. Okay, excellent. So there's a couple of questions that kind of come in that we can answer very quickly, hopefully, um, just on general webinars. Um, so there's, there's a question here about primary science. Um, it, is there any webinars for that? Yes, we've, we've done, in fact, we did a fantastic webinar last week on Earth and um, space um, and the new strand within primary science. So I would suggest having a look at our webinar page on collins.co.uk because not only have we done a couple that have been recorded, but there are many, there, there are more planned. So keep an eye on that website because there is more to come. Um, we, we greatly enjoy the interactions of these webinars. Um, and then the second one, actual webinar. So uh, are there any webinar on catchy starters for math subjects um, or techniques to start a lesson with full, full participation of students? We haven't done one yet, but I do know that two of my colleagues who are very, very good at the logistics of, um, of the webinars and help us with the planning have just written that down. Um, so keep an eye on the, the webinars page because I think that would be a fantastic subject for a webinar um, and we will find someone to do that for us as soon as we can because the starter is such an important part of the maths lesson. Um, okay on to the next question which is uh, quite, quite I'm not sure there's a right or wrong answer to this one Holly so I'm going to pose the question and we can see where we go. What age should a, a child start understanding about maths? Um, I guess there's always scope for maths to be a part of a child's life as they start to learn language and figure out the world. So, I mean, there's always opportunities for it. Um, Colin's course starts at stage one. And I don't know if you want to touch on KG. Um, yeah. Yeah, it start pretty early for our course. Absolutely. Um, so uh, it's actually a discussion that we had amongst some colleagues uh, only yesterday, because we are we're doing a Collins are producing a, an early years course, a KG course um, in for math, science, and English. The idea of that is it will follow on into stage one, so it will prepare children at a young age um, for, for more more understanding uh, of maths and science and English um, in the run up to stage one. So we're working on that at the moment. We're talking to a lot of schools about their their early years provision and, and what they need for it. Um, but there's a, a whole host of really good information about informal learning and, and learning of mathematics and, and how really good early years um, settings are able to introduce a conceptual understanding about maths in simple ways like counting children in and out of the building um, or um, a, around lunch times or, or, or other play. And, and th there's, there's really good. So there was no defined early point that a child should start understanding about maths, um, but it's very important not to, I mean, we believe, and certainly this was the, the end of the discussion yesterday, is that it's really important not to go um, overly formal too quickly because uh, a lot of children get put off because they don't understand as quickly as, as others at a very early age. and. Um, they could be put off maths quite dramatically and then you as teachers in stage one and above have got a bigger problem because that child uh, associates maths with, with difficulty so um, there's a lot of debate going on at early years at the moment uh, which is probably a subject for another webinar in itself um okay um a question here about problem solving and reasoning books um will they still be available or new additions for that now the plan, I think, Holly, at the moment is to keep the current editions available um, as they are. 
for the time being um, and to evaluate what we do with that sort of down the line. Uh, I think I'd also add to that that the new curriculum from Cambridge has removed the problem solving strand in itself um, and replaced it with thinking and working mathematically so there wouldn't at this stage particularly be scope for it for the second edition in the format that it is at the moment um, but there is problem solving and reasoning built in throughout the um, main courses. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, a question here would the online book have collaboration space for students to solve and send their work online for their teachers? Um, I'd say that the ebook platform itself does have the flexibility of adding comments and annotating it. So there is scope for learners to use the online book, like the students' become workbook, almost as they would in a print book, um, adding their answers into that, which potentially be used as a collaborative way of showing it to their teachers in that format. Um, and then there's also the um, digital downloads of things like resource sheets, which are available as PDFs, which again could be shared between teachers and students as needed um, for an online classroom. Um, okay, um, one quick question that we can, we can answer. Um, uh, someone was uh, informed that the new version of Collins Maths is only available in digital and the printed copy not launched yet. Not launched yet. Um, the, the, there are printed copies of grade one and grade two or stage one and stage two which are available. Um, obviously as they're, they're being printed over the next few weeks um, we have just launched the digital first because we know that a lot of schools want to see the new books um, as, as soon as they're available and we felt that rather than wait for the printed books to become available before the digital books we would launch the digital books uh, as early as we had them um, giving people an opportunity to view and, and evaluate as quick as possible um, so but generally there's about a two week gap between or two to three week gap between the, the digital and the printed being available so there's not a, a, a huge gap um, so there are as I say some printed definitely available now um, but not the full set yet um, okay there's a question about um, distance learning there's a couple of questions really about this um, and, and really I think we can probably address them Holly do, how do you feel um, are there any tips about implementing the new sort of primary maths using digital um, distance learning given the, the, the challenges that schools face at the moment um, the books themselves haven't specifically been written with that in mind, obviously, hoping that they will be used um, once children are back in classroom. Um, I think the structure of the course and all of the different resources that are available means that there is definitely the flexibility to be able to do that. Um, as I said previously, there are ebooks available of all of the print books, so teachers are able to access them and learners and have their own copies of them. Um, and along with that, all of the teachers' resources are available as digital downloads in editable format. Um, so it can really be manipulated based on what you need and how your learners are accessing the content at that time. Uh, and I think there's a couple of things that I would add into that which really do help in terms of the of, of distance learning from the feedback that we've had. Um, so the ebooks that we, the, and the platform that we've used to deliver our ebooks means that they are downloadable, um, they are usable on a student's mobile device um, or a computer, so they don't need a, an internet connection to view it all the time, you can, you can have it offline and that makes a huge difference to the ability of students to uh, engage with some of the activities in the books. Um, there is another thing, there's a project we spoke about a little bit about this morning, um, but a, a project that we that we're doing with Google and Google Classrooms to see what we can do to adapt some of the resources that we are developing for primary maths and, and other subjects into a format that is easily usable within Google Classrooms and I think that will make a huge difference in terms of the teachers resources. Um, I said this morning and I'll, I'll say that again um, in the second webinar of the day um, basically uh, if you are, uh, as a school, actively using Google Classrooms uh, quite a lot and um, are interested in international primary maths, do drop uh, an email to the Collins International box um, and, and let us know because we're looking for some schools to take part in some of the early work in piloting and developing those resources across lots of subjects. So 
Um, that's a plea for anyone who wants to get involved with with helping us make sure that these resources are fully accessible in Google Classrooms. Drop us an email, uh, and we'll, we'll have a conversation. Um, okay, this is a, 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 a challenging question for you, Holly. Um, uh, there's a question basically saying in Colin's books, the explanation part of any concept is less. Um, presumably and possibly than some others. Um, do you think there should be more explanation for a particular concept? Um, and I know that we quite often have a teacher-led um, sort of process. So a lot of the explanation of concept is within the teacher's guide and teacher-led in order to facilitate that. But Holly, comments on, on, on that question? Yeah, I'd say we've definitely got a staggered approach to it in terms of in the earlier stages with long, younger learners, um, there's far fewer text on their, on the pages of the book that they're looking at. For example, in the student's book, um, in some of the very early lessons of stage one, I think it's largely just a bright picture that engages them with the topic. Um, for example, learning the numbers one to 10 and counting objects along with a really visually led guided practice example of the activity so they can apply it and see how it works, um, which is supported by a lot of content in the teacher's guide on how to guide learners through that lesson. So while the content isn't on the page for them, which may potentially be a little off-putting if there's a large amount of text that they need to understand and process, um, they're able to apply the concept, but without feeling disheartened by um, a page that perhaps isn't as appealing to a younger learner. Um, but as you progress throughout the stages and the maths um, obviously becomes more complex and there's more explanation um, and discussion of concepts needed. Um, as you get up into stage six, there's far more information on the pages for the students so that they've got a bit more um, individuality over what they're learning and not relying on the teachers explaining things to them. Okay, cool, thanks. Um, so we, we've got a few more questions left still um, and a little bit of time. So um, there's a question here on um, the sort of level of multiplication tables uh, throughout the primary course that a student would need to know uh, at levels. Um, I'm not sure we have that information to the fingertips. You may well do. <laughs> Um, in, in what level they're required to, to know on the times tables? Not quite off the top of my head. I know that they tend to start around stage two and sort of progress throughout to about stage four or five, potentially, with the higher level times tables. But um, the course is structured really carefully and a lot of thought has gone into the progression to ensure that things are done steadily and with right background knowledge as they progress throughout it so there is a lot of support to make sure that the um different areas of maths are placed at the right stages um okay excellent so there's a, a question here on uh, assessments uh, does it include assessments and data analysis resources i'm assuming this is referring really to the digital aspect of what we do um and the one thing to be really clear about is that we only really provide sort of informal assessment within the texts anyway um, because part of the the process of publishing for, for Cambridge assessment is that, that they obviously provide their own formative and, and, and summative assessments that that we don't interfere with. Um, so in form of the assessments throughout the the, the informal assessments that we have in the text, Holly, may, a, a short summary of what we have in there, maybe? Yeah, there are lots of different places throughout the course for informal assessment. There are, there's an opportunity at the end of each lesson in the workbook to learners to self-assess and consider how they feel about the topic. There's a same day intervention section in the teacher's guide, which offers questions for teachers to be able to gauge learners' understanding at the end of a lesson. Um, and we've also got the class record keeping documents, which are available at the back of the teacher's guide and online as well. And that's just a place for teachers to be able to record how individual learners are doing based on expectations for each strand of the course. Um, and it's a flexible document that can be used throughout the year and is just able to track progression and see how learners are doing and if they'll be meeting expectations by the end of the stage. So there's lots of um, areas for intervention to make sure that learners do progress. Excellent, thanks. So there's two questions left which I can, I can 
sort of answer in one roll up referring back to what we talked about in terms of Google and things like um, working being managed and marked as part of what we are discussing with how to, to interact with Google Classrooms and Google Forms. Um, and that, so the, the, there's a lot of development there in terms of managing marks and online lessons. And we know that the, the current environment means that providing for a online and virtual learning sort of experience is very important to us. Um, so there is a, there's a question here about busy end books um, from year one to year six. That was an assessment part with that. That is correct because that was for the national curriculum in the UK rather than for Cambridge. So we were uh, much more able to provide more substantial assessment than we were able to do for the Cambridge courses. Um, the, referring back to, to assessment, um, Holly, just to clarify, there's a question. The, the, is that both summative and formative? Yes, so um, there's opportunities at all different stages of the course. As I said, at the end of a lesson, at the end of a unit, and at the end of each term and year, there's the opportunity to assess. So it's both um, development and at the end of the stage as well. Great, great. Excellent. Um, okay, um, so really what remains for me to do is uh, mainly thank you, Holly, um, for sparing time to, to talk to us and to give us answers to questions, um, none of which were told to you in advance, so putting you on, your, uh, on, your, on the spot all the way through, which is, is great to, to see the answers. Um, thanks again uh, to my colleagues who arranged the logistics of the webinar. Um, they do a, a brilliant job um, and get it all working for us. And thanks to you all for, for joining. Um, as I said, uh, there's, if you need any more information, if you want any more information, please, please do get in touch with us. We'd love to hear from you. Um, if you let us know the school you're from, it helps us to answer the query, but, but do just drop us a line. And if you're interested in other webinars that we've done, please go to the collins.co.uk website, look, look, look for the webinars page. Um, and there's ones we've done in the past and ones that are coming up. And we hope really to see you all again uh, at another webinar soon. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>